Welcome to Democratic Television, a program of the Santa Clara County Democratic Party that brings the insights, perspectives, and opinions of our always thoughtful guests. Our focus today is on elections, and our guest today is Santa Clara County Registrar of Voters, Shannon Boucher. Shannon, welcome to the show, and thank you for being here. Well, hello. Thank you for having us here so we can help share with our voters about the Voters' Choice Act. Yeah, thank you for coming. Uh, I want to uh, say for our, the benefit of our viewers that, of course, the registrar is a nonpartisan position. You help all voters, you help all candidates, and it's sort of your, the nature of your role. So you're here today not in a partisan role, but just to do voter outreach or in education. Correct. That is correct. We yes. just want people to get out and vote. No matter how they vote, we just want them to have their voices heard. Very good. Well, um, uh, we're taping this show at a time when we're getting ready for the March 2020 primary election. And uh, we're going to start to talk soon uh, in this show about big changes that are coming um, uh, to the way voting is done in Santa Clara County and many other counties throughout the state. But before I get to that point, I just wanted to, to ask you a couple questions about the registrar's office and, and your role as registrar. Um, I think people know that around election time, the registrar is involved in conducting elections. Uh, what else does the registrar's office do? And, and what sort of things are done on an ongoing basis to always be prepared for the next upcoming election? Yeah, there's a lot behind the scenes that goes on at the Registrar of Voters. And it takes us about six months to conduct a countywide election. So we are busy for a long time, you know, setting up for the election. But year round, we also take care of our voter registration database. Mm. And we do signature checking on the various petitions, initiative, referendum, municipal petitions that come into our office and for the state propositions. Um, so we do outreach. We do over two or 300 community outreach events every year. So we're really about trying to keep um, voting and keep people registered all year long and updating their registration. So it is a, a very busy but uh, very passionate work that's done at the Registrar of Voters. Fabulous. Uh, of course, uh, voters are very aware of the uh, the presidential and gubernatorial elections, uh, but there are other elections that occur from time to time in a county like Santa Clara. It's a big county. It's a lot of different jurisdictions, correct? Yeah, that's correct. We have um, about probably over 70 jurisdictions, school board, special districts, and, and municipal and county inside of our county. So we, on average, have been conducting about three to five elections a year. Right. And uh, I know viewers will be interested in, in learning uh, how you became registrar. How long have you been in the county registrar's office? Well, I've worked in Santa Clara County for 30 years. And of that, 25 years have been at the registrar of voters. Uh, once I came into the office, I have never wanted to leave. So I began in the voter registration division and uh, worked my way up to be registrar. And people in our office, you just fall in love with elections and the passion. And it just, you can't get it out of your blood. <laughs> well, thank you for your long service to the county and in the registrar's office. Uh, at the, uh, I'll make an editorial observation that, in my experience, are very professional and helpful uh, and service oriented, customer service oriented. So it's a very successful okay. organization in that regard. Okay. So, uh, so you're homegrown from the department. And is that typical? Do you have like a lot of long tenure employees in, in, the, in the registrar's office? Yes, we can definitely have a, people who come in and stay. Sometimes we think we're a little crazy because of the hours that we do. Right. But it is. We're just such passionate. We care so much about what we do and our community being able to vote that uh, it's all worth it in the end. Fabulous. In a typical uh, election cycle, you referred to the, the hard work, and I imagine that in the period close to an election, when candidates have a lot of questions and voters might start to have questions, and certainly in the period after elections, um, it, it, that must be a pretty intense time in terms of the workload and schedule for the office. Yes, that's correct. Mm. We are basically working about seven days a week for a couple months, you know, probably for February and for March before the election and after the election. Right. Um, but uh, we bring in several hundred extra help employees to help out with our permanent staff wow. to conduct the election. So it's a very, we grow and swell into a very large operation for the several months around the election. And some of it seems like it must be sort of industrial. You know, your customer service offices seem smallish for the size of operation that you actually manage. Uh, are there uh, more industrial spaces where the ballots are being opened from the vote by mail ballots and compared to signatures. Uh, and is that temporary or do you kind of always have that operation available to you? 
Actually, we do um, all the opening of the vote by mail ballots in our office. Wow. So we work right alongside wow. uh, two fifty foot sorting machines to mm -hmm. sort the ballots out. But we do have a couple of buildings, locations in the buildings that we're at on Burger Drive mm -hmm. where our voters come to visit us. So we do occupy the space year round. I see. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, it seems like it must be a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of attention to the election. People, of course, are keenly interested in the outcome, and they're and 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 rightfully, voters are very um, uh, interested in making sure that their vote is counted and to seeing what the results are. Uh, how do folks in your office manage that? And there's a lot of attention and pressure at election time, I imagine, to get things done and get it right, and a lot of people watching. <laughs> That is true. There's a, a lot of stress and pressure that goes on, but we really do focus more, try to be a family atmosphere mm -hmm. and to assist each other and be a team and pull in and help other divisions as they may go through their different peaks in their period. Right. Um, so we we know what we're up for for an election. Right. And yes, we get, you know, very tired and exhausted. But again, we just really, you know, I love what I do. I would never leave it and I'll you know, plan on staying here until my time. Fabulous, yeah. fabulous. Uh, in the time that you've been at the registrar's office, I believe there's been, I know that, that our party has really encouraged voters to, to um, uh, transition to vote by mail, and I know that voters generally have done that. Yeah. Uh, and I wonder, it, how has that changed uh, just the dynamic and the pace and the cycle for an election in a typical year? Right. Well, before uh, when the law required that maybe you had a disability or a certain reason to vote by mail, right. you know, we had 20 or 30,000 registered voters that mm. were vote by mail. And then we were up to before the Voters Choice Act that we've just implementing, we were already about 78% of our voters that voted by mail. So really four out of every five voters vote by mail. Mm -hmm. So over time that has changed to where, and voters, you know, they want to um, hold on to their ballots a little longer and right. as they get closer to election day. So I've really seen that mm -hmm. uh, make a difference in when we receive ballots. Right. I received several hundred thousand ballots on election week alone. Wow. Uh, so it does kind of change the operations about processing those ballots right. uh, during the time that we have to do that. So, right. And with now, everyone is going to receive a ballot in the mail. We may see the returns by mail go up higher than Even actually higher going than to the vote centers. Yeah, yeah very interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, let's transition to at least beginning to talk about sure. uh, the, the, the Voters' Choice um, uh, Act. It seems like the theory is to open up a, a longer window uh, when, when, um, uh, when, when you're on the front lines in terms of being able to receive ballots or allow people to, to vote. Uh, and then the longer window seems that would make it necessary to have uh, a fewer numbers of, of, of but but well staffed and well prepared uh, vote centers. So what's what is the difference in the model and and what does that what has it meant for you as you prepare for this election? Sure. Um, well, we've been preparing for about two years towards the Voters Choice Act. It mm -hmm. was passed last April by the Board of Supervisors, mm -hmm. and some of the key differences really for if you were a vote by mail voter, nothing changes for you. But for our polling place voters, now we have vote centers which are actually much more, are much better for a voter because they're more convenient. And the biggest uh, benefit for that that I see, a voter before, they had to go to their one specific polling place. But now they can go to any vote center. So they can go to one of our 110 vote centers throughout the county for the 11 days that uh, centers will be open. So we're hoping, you know, as you're driving on the weekend out to go shopping, you pull over and vote at a vote center. So. We're, these are going to be more full-service vote centers, things that you couldn't do at a polling place. So we really think the voters are going to like this because it's more options for them. Very interesting. The the polling places, I, I can see how that would be helpful to a voter. Uh, for example, I know that it, you hear anecdotally stories of voters who get stuck at work late or their kid is sick and they have to pick them up from school and end up across town, not near their polling place and unable to vote. So it sounds like right. it would solve that problem for them and they could just find another place to vote. Yes, anywhere, or on lunch while well, they're working. If there's right. a vote center nearby, then go out and vote. Or, yeah. The Maybe. number, uh, the, there are a certain number of vote centers will open 11 days before the election, and then there'll be even more closer to the election. Is that correct? That's correct. There's yeah. about 22 vote centers that are going to open 11 days, a total of 11 days. And then when we get to four days, 
uh, the Saturday before the election, we'll open an additional about 88. So we'll have about 110 vote centers open for that four-day period for anybody to vote at, yeah. Will those vote centers be open sort of business hours, you know, 8 to 5 or 9 to 5, or will some of them be open even in the evening? Uh, the vote centers will be open from 9 to 5, but that is every day of the week mm -hmm. for including that 11-day period. Yes, yeah. including the weekend. So while they're out shopping or, you know, going to school, they can stop by and vote. So 11 days, that would be two full weekends even Correct. before the election day. It'll open the Saturday, the two weekends before the election. Right. Yeah. And uh, compared to, uh, it's a pretty big change, and, and you, as you mentioned, they're full service. It's not just, we have drop boxes. You have long head drop boxes, right? Correct. But this isn't a place where, this is not simply a secure drop box. It's an actual center where there will be employees who will be prepared to help you in other ways. That is correct. So um, voters can come update their voter registration. They can register for the first time. They can get their ballot replaced There's uh, and receive language assistance more than they could at a vote center. So it's going to hopefully make it much easier for our voters. Very interesting. Uh, it sounds like that must have been a challenge to, um, will it be temporary staff mostly at the vote centers? Uh, and, and they must be um, differently trained uh, and, and, and different folks just in terms of their availability to work over such a long window than just a polling day worker. That is correct. That has been one of our challenges was mm. finding extra help, uh, temporary staff to come in and work with us. But we've been successful mm -hmm. in that in the end. So they will be temporary staff that have gone through a training in our office with our permanent staff so that we have lead training, we have election aid training, we have volunteer training, so we've broken it up so that they'll be well trained about how to run the vote center and help help the voters and actually help explain our new voting system to voters also. Right. I imagine there'll be a lot of questions. Yeah. Well, um, we're uh, going to take a short break uh, in a moment, and uh, when uh, we return for the second segment of our show, uh, maybe we have an opportunity to get into um, more specifically a little bit how the vote centers will work, uh, what voters will be able to, 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 to do there, and what that will mean for you in the registrar's office. That'd so, be great. Thank you for, okay. start, for our discussion so far. You're welcome. Santa Clara County voters, get ready for your new voting experience. All voters will receive a ballot in the mail weeks before the election. When filling out your ballot, completely fill in the bubble with blue or black ink. Please make sure to sign, date, and write your place of residency on the back of the envelope. Now your ballot is ready to be mailed with the postage paid return envelope. All valid ballots mailed before or postmarked on Election Day will be counted as long as they are received within three days following Election Day. We have many drop boxes throughout Santa Clara County. Go to sccvote.org forward slash dropbox to find a drop box near you. You can also return your completed ballot at any one of our brand new full service vote centers, which open up to 10 days before Election Day. You can check to see if your ballot was received by visiting sccvote.org. Under Popular Services, click Vote by Mail Tracking, then answer the following prompts to check the status of your ballot. Thank you for your part in upholding democracy. To learn more, visit sccvote.org. Welcome back for the second half of our show. Our guest today is Santa Clara County Registrar of Voters, Shannon Boucher. Shannon, before the break, we were just starting to talk about the vote centers and uh, the changes coming up. And with those changes, I imagine voters might have uh, questions that can be answered uh, from your website. So would you just like to give the URL for your website? Where should voters go? They should go to sccvote.org and get all of their election information, including checking their voter registration, or learning how to register to vote. Very good. And I imagine the website, if they still had questions, provides a way to reach out to the registrar's office. Is there also a phone number that voters could use to get information? Sure. I think the easiest one to remember is 408-299-VOTE. Very yeah. good. Very helpful. Um, I've looked at the voters' choice sections on the website, and I find them to be very helpful. Um, one thing that uh, I think bears mentioning is that to find vote centers, you have a page set up and it allows a voter to enter at the address that they either are registered at or want to know where there are vote centers nearby, and they can find information. 
Yes, there's a lot of good information on our website, and that's also a brand new feature that we just put up mm -hmm. that you can enter your address and find several of the closest vote centers to your location so with if, a map. <laughs> if I entered uh, my home address or my work address, it would show, for example, those vote centers that open 11 days before and then maybe also the one that opens four days before, and I could plan which day I wanted to go and how far. Right. That lookup shows you some of the closer ones. We will also have a listing of the entire 110 vote centers right. on our website in case somebody was interested. And when we mail every voter their vote-by-mail ballot, we'll have a list of all the vote centers and the ballot drop-off boxes in there, too. Oh, very good. Um, on Election Day, we know that some of the voters will go to their old polling place. Are you prepared for a deluge of phone calls saying, how come the, my neighborhood church no longer has my polling place and what do I do? I'm sure we will receive some. Mm -hmm. uh, we are doing two direct mailers to every voter, plus their pamphlet and their vote by, vote by mail ballot that explains about the vote centers. But I think there will be some that do that and go to their prior vote center. Mm -hmm. We did mail posters or information to our previous polling places and ask that they post a sign saying we're no longer a polling place and direct them to our website to help, hopefully, those voters that may show up. Very good. Um, the voting centers themselves, uh, I know that there are some things that voters might be surprised to learn that they're able to do now. So, for example, I believe that um, voters are used to uh, being able and really being required to register um, uh, sometime before uh, Election Day. Uh, but if a voter failed to do that, um, uh, are, are there options that are available to them? Or should they give up or should they go to a vote center and will someone be able to help them? Never give up. I want every person to vote who wants to vote. Yeah. Uh, we have what we call conditional voter registration, so mm -hmm. CVR. And now, starting with these 2020 elections, our vote centers offer the conditional voter registration to every voter. Right. They do not need to come to our single location at our office. They can go to any of the 110 vote centers and actually register and vote conditionally. What if a voter isn't sure? They think they're registered and they're not really sure, but they've got, or they've gotten very interested in the partisan election, uh, the primary election for a president, and they want to be sure that they get the right ballot and are able to vote for the candidate they choose. How can they check their registration or find out whether they're registered or not, or maybe register if, they, if they're not? Yeah, they can either call our office at the 299 vote or go to our website, the secvote.org, mm -hmm. and they can look up their registration and put some confidential in their information and confirm if they're registered, what address, and what political party that they're registered in. So they can uh, check and make sure all their information is up to date. If a voter finds that their information is wrong or if they're not registered in a party after, actually but want to be, can they, uh, uh, what are their options to change that? Uh, they can actually register online if they mm. have like an ID card or driver's license through the DMV. We have a connection to uh, merge their information and signature with our information. Or they can fill out a paper form at any one of the vote centers or get those usually at government offices or post offices. It's very simple to, to register to vote now. And, and it's simply you just use the registration link on your site as if you were registering for the first time. And you, there might be an option to indicate that you had previously been registered so you know to reconcile the records. That is correct, yes. Very good. What, um, what are the challenges that you're anticipating will come up with these vote centers this first time around? Are there things that seem like they are likely to be a little hard to get done? Well, we've uh, been studying the first five counties that did this in 2018, so we kind of been prepared. I think the biggest challenge will be something that I can't control, which is when the voters turn out to vote. Right. We're encouraging voters to vote early because we are going to be open for 11 days at the vote centers. Mm -hmm. um, but history so far is showing that they still like to come on election day. So um, that I think will be just the challenge of the most number of voters coming on the one day. Right. When voters do come early, like with these windows at the vote centers, are you able to begin to verify the ballots or even count them, or do you have to wait for the election day to begin all of that work? Oh, luckily we can start that before election day because um, by law we're allowed to open ballots 10 business days before election. So roughly about two weeks before the election we mm -hmm. begin processing and opening, and that's how we have uh, results for all our voters at 8 o'clock on election night. 
with this, uh, uh, Santa Clara County is fortunate. We have a very high participation in elections, especially presidential and gubernatorial elections. And uh, with the change to vote by mail, and as you point out, this new process may cause even more voters to vote in that way. Uh, does that is that actually a little bit harder for you in the sense of validating? You have to validate match signatures against the um, the envelopes that come in, or or is it about the same as validating it on election day at the polling place? Um, it's basically going to be the same process mm -hmm. in our office. It's just the quantity. I think of the vote by mail votes are going to go up, but now with our new voting system, we're able to um, count ballots at each of the vote centers versus bringing them all back to be centrally counted. So actually, our election night results, as we call them, may come out at noon the next day. We're actually going to be earlier on election night results because of our new voting system. I see. And it sounds like you've invested in infrastructure to be able to do that at the vote centers? Correct. We have a new voting system. We have new electronic poll books that replace the paper roster that voters sign in mm -hmm. on. And we have uh, counting of the ballots there at the vote centers. So we've invested in technology processes and enough uh, permanent and temporary staff to conduct it. So um, uh, a, a voter can go to any of the vote centers and actually present themselves and, and vote. Um, uh, what if I lose my ballot? You're going to mail me a ballot 30 days before the election, and, and with, in my house it could end up in a pile of catalogs that, uh, <laughs> that it gets lost in. What would I do? Uh, you can just go to any one of the vote centers mm -hmm. and vote. We can look you up in our new electronic poll books, determine that you have not cast a ballot, and we will issue you and print you on demand right then and there a new ballot to vote on. And if you have already... Uh, returned your ballot, then we would not let you vote. Okay, so, and, and that's a way to make sure that people mm -hmm. cast their one vote, they have the freedom and the availability to do it in all of these ways, but once they've done it, they're off, off the list. That is correct. And we connect with our statewide database, so we can also determine if you cast one other places in the state. I see. Interesting. Yeah. Um, the, um, are there new voting systems or new voting machines to vote in person at the vote centers, or will those be familiar to people who used to vote in the previous polling places? Well, the, it is a new system that has ballot marking devices with bigger, clearer screens. So mm -hmm. I think they're really going to like the new technology. It's much simpler, and they're able to review their ballot and the votes that they're casting right there before they count it. And the new machines, you know, will tell them well, you've undervoted or maybe you've overvoted. Would you like to change your, your vote? So I think they're really going to like them. And uh, they al we also have accessible equipment. So if you're visually impaired or hearing impaired, we're, we're ready for all voters. Very good. And, uh, and it sounds like uh, it won't matter really to the registrar's office uh, which, which method a voter chooses. It sounds like it might be a little bit helpful for those of us who like to hear the results sooner rather than later if people were to turn them in sooner, if they've already made their choices. But apart from that, whether they vote at the voting center or drop off their ballot at the voting center or simply mail it in, they'll, they'll, the ballots will all get to you and be counted in an appropriate way. That is correct. We have 30 days after the election to canvas mm. the results, and we audit all of the machinery and equipment and ballots. So it, it's a lengthy process, but we're about transparency and getting accurate vote counts than speed. Uh, if a voter were uh, mm. uh, nervous about it, uh, the, new, the changes, as people sometimes can be, uh, and wanted to check afterwards, did my vote, did my ballot actually get counted? Would they still be able to do that, or are there mechanisms to do that? Yeah, um, we have had that, and we will continue to have that on our website where a voter can go ahead and see if their ballot was counted. Mm -hmm. And if anything, they can always call our office and we'll be able to look it up and tell them. Yeah. If, if a ballot's not counted, does the registrar office reach out to voters or do campaigns who uh, are checking at the registrar's office and observing the count uh, sometimes do that? Or is it more that the voters themselves really need to check their own ballot if they want to be sure that their ballot was counted? Well, voters can definitely check and make sure it's been counted. But we do have a relatively new process that's actually great for and been able to count hundreds of more ballots for the prior elections. If a voter's signature doesn't match what the record we have on file, or if they forgot to sign their envelope, we are going to actually mail them a letter. So we will reach out to them and ask them to submit a letter with their signature or give us a new signature to, for us to compare 
for the mismatch signatures. So uh, voters are going to really like that. And me too, because then I get to count more ballots. Right. <laughs> Fabulous. And we already have a good uh, high level of participation in elections. Yeah. So yeah. is there anything we haven't yet spoken about that you'd like to voters to be have a keep in mind about the Voters' Choice Act or the upcoming election generally? Just, um, you know, we're changing our voting model. It's been over 100 years of using polling places, and I hope the voters will like the more convenient uh, locations that they can go to and have the opportunity to go out. I'd also like to remind our voters that they can still be involved in democracy at levels within our office, and they could come in, they could volunteer with our office, they could work at the vote centers. We need uh, volunteers to help us actually bring in ballots and in teams on election night. So there's many ways they can get involved directly, and they could get that information on our website. And again, I just would encourage them to go to our website to look up their voter registration and make sure all the information is current. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for all the information you've uh, you've shared today. Um, uh, we are uh, nearing the end of our time, and uh, I wanted to take one minute to acknowledge that uh, this show, this edition of, of DTV, we've been nearly 25 years of taping, and I, either all of or most of that time in the same KMVT studios. Mm -hmm. And to my knowledge, this may be the very last show to be taped at the current location on Terrabella and Mountain View. And so you and I have had the honor of being the uh, host yes. and the guest of the last oh. show to be taped in this uh, important cable access um, uh, resource. And so uh, I just want to thank our crew of D, uh, DTV and also the KMVT studio and staff and uh, all of its supporters for the opportunity we've had over the years to take this show. And uh, thank you, uh, Shannon Boucher, for being here with us for this show. Well, my pleasure, and thank you for providing this information to our voters. And I feel honored to be part of this special taping. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for watching DTV. Give us a call at 408 445 9500 or visit our website, www.sccdp.org. Help us to make a difference on the campaign trail. Thank you.